Happy Independence Day. On 15th of August 2020, India has celebrated 74 years of Independence Day. That means we have experienced freedom for the last 73 years. Amen. And uh, whenever we celebrate Independence Day, that reminds us once upon a time we were uh, we were uh, not free. And uh, that also reminds us the freedom fighters who fought for a freedom. They sacrificially uh, uh, lay down their lives and uh, many other things they have laid down so that you and I could uh, experience this uh, of freedom. Just like the leaders uh, of the freedom movement who selflessly worked towards the uh, uh, freeing of India and uh, I believe uh, we, we as a church has a responsibility to build our nations. Now, uh, there are many things as a church we can do to build our nations but this morning I want to talk about two important points and when we practice these two important points as a, fo as, as, as a foundation of our life, the uh, rest of the things that whatever we are planning to do or whatever we are doing will have a glorious end. So what are the two points that I am going to talk about? Number one, I am going to talk, uh, talk uh, about a prayer. Number two, a blessings over a nation. So these are the two points I am going to cover in this message. And uh, let's quickly go to the point number one on prayer. And uh, uh, and this morning I want to just remind us, you know, I am not going to share anything new that you would not know. But whatever I am going to read as, from the scripture, uh, it will be like a, let it be like a reminder for us. For if, if you are not practicing uh, what uh, uh, Jesus has taught, taught us to do or what the scripture is asking us to do, let us come back once again to live the scripture out in our lives so that uh, not only us but also our community, even our city, e even our nation will be blessed through our lives. Amen. So quickly let me read a couple of scriptures. Isaiah chapter 56 verse 7, the last end of the scripture I will be reading right now. Uh, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. For my house, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all my peoples. Now, in, in the earlier days, people would gather up in, in the tabernacle to offer prayers unto God. And over the period of time, uh, this gathering has, to, has become uh, more or less like a business center uh, model. People where the, the religious people were exploiting the innocent people of selling and buying and uh, no more uh, the reverence for prayer uh, <clears throat> was there during the, during the time when Jesus was there, especially in the house of God. And when, when Jesus saw these things are happening, he was very, very much grieved that the house of God, instead of offering prayers, they are buying and selling. So, so he quoted this uh, a scripture from Isaiah 56 for, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all my peoples. Now, today we don't have a tabernacle to gather, to, uh, to gather together and pray, but we are the tabernacle. We are the house of God. We are the temple of God and God lives inside us. And if God expected uh, in those days the house of prayer, the house of God to be a house of prayer, today he is expecting this tabernacle, this house of God to be a house of prayer. Amen. So we need to pray so that God will use our prayers and not only he will bless us but also bless through us. Now as, as I was studying the scripture on prayer, I am convinced that God wants us to pray and God wants us to uh, uh, bless others through our prayers. So, uh, so we need to really learn all kinds of prayers so that uh, in, uh, we, we can pray and we can experience God's presence more and more in our life. Now, now even uh, if we, when we read uh, uh, Matthew chapter uh, <clears throat> Matthew chapter six verse nine and ten, uh, the the entire uh, the Lord's prayer, one can see. Prayer is like a like prayer. We have to do for prayer is for everything that we do in our in our life. Like in in another words, Lord's prayer reminds us we have to live through our prayers. Amen. Our life have to be lived through our prayers. So that is the uh, pattern we can see in Lord's prayer. Now to begin with, let me quickly go through the thing. When God, if, if God is saying, uh, Jesus is saying that the heavenly kingdom ca can come on earth when we ask for it to come okay how it how it is how it can come through prayers i mean if you want god's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven how it can come how it can come 
through prayers even if you want our daily bread you know that we want to, that we should li- live by how it can come through prayers it's a daily bread okay we should ask it daily and even if you want to forgive people and if you don't find, if you, if you cannot find strength to forgive people how we can get strength through prayer we can ask god's grace for us to forgive people and even if you want to overcome sin or temptation how we can do that it is through prayers even if you want to acknowledge god's goodness and honor him it is through prayer so so basically we have to live our lives through prayers i'll repeat we have to live our lives through prayers and god will use our prayers not only to bless us but our community our family our city even our nation that is what we are going to see uh, through the scriptures this morning so quickly let me read uh, roman chapter uh, 13 verse 1 let every person be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except from god and those that exist have been instituted by god so all the authorities that we see the government authority whatever is been established some of the things we may like some of the things we may dislike or we may not agree everything has been allowed and established by god so uh, for example even when pontius pilate was uh, when jesus was having a trial before pontius pilate Jesus told Pontius Pilate you got the authority because it was given from the above so so similarly some of the people we may not agree or we may not understand or we may not like but every authority has been uh, given to people by god so it is not a surprise to god neither it should be a surprise to us therefore we should have the right attitude in uh, in dealing with the people who are in authority now how we can do that let me show from the scripture 1 peter chapter 2 verse 17 honor everyone love the brotherhood fear god honor the emperor we don't have emperor but we have president we have prime minister we have chief minister we have other uh, higher higher officials who are in the govern, government body to run this nation so like some of them like i said we may not uh, like them some of them we may like them but uh, we don't have to hate them we don't have to agree with whatever they say uh, uh, say about our nation but what we can do we can disagree and at we can honor them so bible in fact commands us to love the enemy so that, that means we should have the love for all the people in our uh, in our uh, land i mean we should aim to love everyone in our life <clears throat> so uh, so now the especially with respect to the authorities over our lives we should honor those people whom god has placed for, uh, in that in that particular area now i'm going to read one more scripture then this will make more clear about uh, 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 what we should do and uh, how we should do now in 1 timothy chapter 2 verse 1 it goes like this for first of all then i urge that supplications prayers intercessions and thanksgiving be made for all people pray fervently so that through our prayers people's lives are touched amen and then verse 2 talks about for whom for kings and for all who are in high positions that we may lead a peaceful life and quiet life and godly and dignified in every uh, every way that means through our prayers when we pray for this higher officials when we pray for the kings and chief minister and president what is happening that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life godly and dignified in every area so for any reason if you are not able to live a quiet life or dignified life or uh, godly life maybe we are not praying for uh, the higher authorities whom god has uh, uh, placed us uh, on our nation so we should learn to pray for them and when we pray for them probably you, you can see the wonders of god over their life now let me read verse 3 and when you pray for them what is happening to jesus let's see it this is good and it is pleasing in the sight of god our savior that means god is well pleased when we pray for our when when we pray for our uh, for a prime minister or the chief minister or the home minister or various kind of minister when we when we pray for them god is really well pleased and what is happening through that when we pray and uh, and the bible ta- talks about in verse 4 who desires jesus desires all people 
to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. That means when we pray through our prayers, okay, God's desire can be fulfilled and God's desire can be fulfilled and, and they all can come to the knowledge of the truth. So through our prayers, people's, people's blindness can go. People's understanding can, uh, can be enlightened. Amen. That is the power of prayer that uh, God has uh, given, given us to pray and to see the kingdom of God invading on earth as it is in heaven. Now, in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 7 also talks about, but seek the welfare of the city. Seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on his behalf for in its welfare you will find your welfare. Today, wherever we are, we may be in India or we may be abroad or whichever city that we are in, we should really pray for the welfare of a city. Why? Because like I said in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, uh, chapter, chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, uh, this is pleasing in the eyes of God and through our prayers, God's desire is to, uh, is to, is to save people, for, for all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. When we pray, uh, our, not only our lives are getting blessed, not only our, our, our uh, officials who are, whom God has placed on a higher authority, they are getting blessed, but our nation, our city is getting blessed. Amen. The second part of the message I was talking about uh, the pronouncing blessings over our city. Pronouncing blessings over our city. Now in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 11, let me read it for all of us. By the blessings of the upright, a city is exalted. By the blessings of the upright, a city is exalted. But, the, by, but by the mouth of the wicked, it is overthrown. So, as the righteous one of God, okay, now God has made us righteous because of not what we did, but because what Jesus has done over our lives. Now, because we have the righteousness of God, when we pronounce a blessing over a city, the city is blessed. Okay, so now let me read one more scripture. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9, in that the scripture talks about we are the royal priest of God. Okay, we are the royal priest of God. So now, <clears throat> in those days, uh, the the only few only one tribe was chosen as a priest but because of uh, what Jesus has done on the cross now all of us are priests and all of us are uh, uh, kings in the kingdom of God amen so we have a, a special privilege to be called as a priest now what is the role of a priest in the, in those days the role of the priest is to carry the presence of God you know to carry the presence of God and to take care of the presence of God so that is the role of the priest. So now, so what a priest would do, apart from uh, apart from uh, carrying the presence of God, the responsibility of the priest is to represent people to God and God to people. So these are the two responsibility a priest has to fulfill. That he has to represent the sacrifices that comes to God and he has to pronounce the blessings of God upon the people. So he has to represent God to people. So now. Keeping, in, keeping this in mind, I want to read uh, Numbers chapter uh, 6 verse 22 onwards. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to Aaron and his son saying, Thus you shall bless the people of Israel. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So shall they put my name upon the people of Israel and I will bless them. So as a priest, okay, what is uh, what was Aaron's responsibility? To pronounce a blessings upon the people. And what is happening? But the moment when he is pronouncing blessings upon the people, uh, it, it, verse 7 says, verse 27 says, So shall they put my name upon the people of Israel. So shall they put my name upon the upon the people of Israel that means when you and I as a priest of God when we bless someone we are putting the name of God over the people over that person and Bible says God says I will bless the person so that is why when we bless someone they are blessed amen when we bless someone they are blessed it's not just praying for a person but when we bless someone, God bless you. God be with you. When we say such small blessings also, that is tremendous presence of God can be released through our lives. So now, how we can do that? It is not simply 
pronouncing your blessings but as the priest we have to carry the presence of god being in the presence of god and from the presence of god when we pronounce these blessings we can see the manifestation of the blessings that we put over or that we bless over our people amen so uh, as a priest <clears throat> okay uh, when when we when we bless a thing or when we bless a city or when we bless a uh, uh, a people uh, through our blessings god is blessing people and also the city amen <clears throat> in closing i want to narrate a small story and with that i want to close this message now uh, one day uh, uh, the disciples of jesus tried to cast a demon out demon out of a boy and uh, they were unable to do that and uh, it was not that uh, they had no experience of casting out demons when we read luke chapter 10 verse 17 uh, when jesus sent the disciples two by two to all the cities where he intended to go when they came back to jesus they told jesus even demons obey us in your name so when jesus was not there when the when the father of a son who was demon possessed brought him uh, to jesus when the jesus was not there the disciples tried to use the name of jesus to cast the demon out but for some reason uh, the demon was not going probably because uh, it was a stubborn demon or stronger demon and uh, and it was not going and when jesus came he rebuked the disciples for the lack of faith and uh, he helped the boy to get freed from this uh, demon and uh, when jesus was alone the disciples came and asked jesus why uh, uh, why we, we we were unable to cast out the demons and uh, why you were able to do that uh, for that uh, to that jesus said uh, in mark uh, uh, 9 verse 29 this kind cannot be driven Uh, driven out by anything but prayer now i'm sure uh, jesus is not talking about uh, the frequency of prayer but uh, uh, jesus is talking about the quality of prayer that we need to uh, develop in our, uh, our personal life now most of us for us prayer life is is all about uh, in general not most of us in general for common people a prayer life is all about asking god or or for interceding uh, for one another that we can see Uh, a lot of scripture supporting that uh, kind of prayer but for jesus it was a little different now when jesus was uh, on the mount uh, along with uh, peter james and john he had a supernatural experience of uh, a transfiguration and uh, a voice came from the cloud to peter saying that this is my beloved son listen to him now that's a very important uh, statement you know this this statement why it happened during the time of baptism uh with uh, when john the baptist was baptizing and again uh, right now uh, uh, we 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 can hear the voice the same similar uh, the voice of the father saying this is my beloved son and listen to him now when we understand uh, you know this this thing we can understand jesus prayer life is not all about asking and uh, interceding it his prayer life is all about spending time with the father he wanted to know the father that is why the father uh, the father was telling uh, talking about jesus this is my beloved son that means i i i get great delight spending time with him you know and jesus also had a great delight in spending time with the father and in that uh, relationship of intimacy with the father uh, between the father and the son and all the things that father was uh, showing jesus he was able to do that on the on his or through his ministry and that that is how jesus was doing his ministry probably that is what you and you and i have to learn so that in our uh, in our prayer time you know it is not the number of hours that we spend or is number of things that we ask i believe it is a, it is our understanding of uh, knowing who we are the sons of god and he is our father and probably you and i should work on our relationship uh closer with the father so that we will grow as a mature son in the presence of god because romans chapter uh, 8 verse 19 says the whole world is uh, groaning in pain waiting for the sons of god to be revealed so when we grow uh, mature as a sons of god in, the, in 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 god's presence probably when we when we move out into ministry the the world will find healing the world will find hope the world will find answer to the questions they are asking for amen so uh, we have a responsibility to grow as a mature sons of god we cannot remain as a babe who keeps drinking milk who keeps asking for things from god i think we should uh, 
we should grow to be a more mature person as a sense of god mature sense of god and from that place we can carry the authority that god has in himself that authority will be transferred to us in such a way because knowing that that authority will not damage us or not we will bring any damage to the people using or abusing the authority but uh, we will facilitate using this authority to bless people and uh, to uh, to help the kingdom of god to be established on earth as it is in heaven i mean that that's how we will be using the authority when we are mature sons of god so uh, i just want to encourage all of us so next time whenever uh, next time whenever opportunity that we have to spend time with the lord let us come uh, to experience the love of the father and grow in the intimacy and and let us aim to grow as a mature sons and daughters of god and from that place when we go and pronounce the blessings upon others the person is getting blessed or when we from the place when we pronounce the blessings upon the city the city is getting blessed and uh, through that i'm sure uh, not only our life is getting blessed our family life is getting blessed uh, our city and our nation also will get blessed amen so with this i just want to quickly uh, remind these two points one is we have a responsibility to pray for a nation and we have a responsibility to pronounce a blessings over a nation so we when we pray we get into the presence of god and from that presence when we come out when we pronounce the blessings over the nation the people and the city both are getting blessed uh, uh, through our blessings amen so with this i will close this message and god bless you all and have a wonderful week ahead amen